from Condition Zero, so that makes sense. Yeah, it's true. But you're my favorite caster. I'd like to pick your brain about the Immortals. You cast them a lot recently, right? You're, you're one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Who's your favorite? Uh, I. You know, I, I don't really have one. Murray Walker. Okay, fair enough. That works. Um, we, like, we casted the Immortals a lot recently. Obviously, uh, Pro League Finals, it's who's playing for them. It's something they felt a little bit flat there. They lost that flair. They lost that kind of dynamic, aggressive play style. It's back now with Steel. I think that they're coming up. They're looking to get to a major. It's been a few attempts out, a few cracks at the whip, but this time, this has got to be the one, surely. This has to be the one. It, that definitely has to be the one. And just to talk about what they said about, you know, Mir in specific and the, the Vegas Squadron guys, there's a lot of CIS action that we don't follow in the Western world, even though they kind of we clump them in with the European CS. Watch this play. Jumper gets caught off aggressive, and JR's there to support, but goes down. There's a lot of talent we don't see. And one of the problems, I think, is that because there's so much roster changes amidst some of those teams, a lot of the good players like Mir, or Electronic, for example, get picked up so quickly. We never see these lower teams develop. So we'll see if they can continue to show some impressive fashion in that sense. Bolt is going to take exactly the man I just mentioned. And Hoochie's going to go down at last. All five stay alive for Immortals. A very fast plan to be, and I don't think they were ready for that at all. There it is. Quite a fast B approach. Absolutely right there. We do talk about this almost every game, and the T-Pistol can be a very valuable part of the map to go to, especially if you feel like your players can outfrag and out duel the opponents towards that CT bomb site. They don't hit the first shot there. They go aggressive to the CT, get taken down. Down, and it's very difficult to recover that bomb. So once the bomb's down, you have to go for a full retake with just the pistols. Crossfires come in, this terrorist can go aggressive as well and just start catching you in the rotations. Very difficult to recover from, and we do have a force buy from a Vegas squadron here. I'm going to assume, I didn't get to catch the game yesterday. I'm going to assume JR is your before them as you have to pull this out for the second round. Like you said, it's the first time we've casted them. It's it's great the minus is to bring these teams are not really very aware of. And I am going to talk over this round because it's not really much to report as of yet. There's going to be some mid control coming in from Phelps. He actually takes down two of the players. And now we do have the CZs and PD50s on the remaining Vega squadron side. Mid control coming in. Nobody needs to overcommit. Wait for any sort of reactions coming in. Just hold the choke points and eventually you'll find another Frank to come in. My favorite reference to the opening segment was Shark Week. Is it actually Shark Week? No, I've never actually watched Shark Week. I just like watching right. social media talk about it. Right, okay. Fair That's enough. what I do with most of my uh, political updates, too. I just watch social media, and I'm fully informed. Well, it's the best place to get news, arguably. It's true. Most up-to-date and most reasonable. Speaking of social media, just follow me on Twitter, everyone. It's, uh, it's a good idea. Totally That's informed Matty, and up, up uh, Matty T. <laughs> yeah. Well, did get tagged up on the highway, but he's done enough damage to assist. And Henny getting a kill on the chopper. We found Henny immediately after, but his twin brother didn't like that, so revenge served. Leave my brother alone. That's what she's gonna rotate back through Z, just trying to buy space if he can find the next kill, pick up a little bit of money on this pistol. Not a bad situation, and force reinvestment would have been an AK if he could have found bolts, but instead, it's the other way around. Then we go two nothing for Immortals. They've lost one player in all of this. Yeah, very simple round going forward. Number three, this is a map I really like for the Immortals team. They actually talk about it in many interviews, especially when Steel joined the team as well. They're more focused on playing, not necessarily like a pug or a mix, they're, like they're kind of a looser play style. They're running the defaults. They've got some very, very talented players in terms of raw mechanical skill. A map like Cash lends itself to this sort of play style. You can run four defaults, boost your best players up towards middle, stick as a unit, split the bomb sites in quite a simple fashion. It doesn't need deep execution. Yes, it does have the potential to do that, but you can rely on just, oh, look at this setup map. There's five this players in sandbag. What is going on. Okay, they get the first kill as well. <laughs> this is, oh, I love um, it. I, this is so great. This is one of those guys, look, it's a full save. We're not going to do much. Let's do something that no one's ever seen. And oddly enough, it gets them I was, two I was, kills and an AK. I was talking over that round like nothing was going to happen, but that was actually kind of interesting. I've got two kills here. It's not over. They haven't recovered the weapons just yet. And they have found another headshot towards Lucas there. He does manage to recover, and it's not the end of the world. It's fine, but still... So, Okay, Just to, to, to give you comparable situations that teams have done of higher pedigree in the past that have worked. Used to be an Inferno, you could stack up multiple players inside the pit, no one would know it. That's pretty common actually in post plants, but think about v uh, VP with their stack on uh, the ramp to on lower cobble. mid and cobble. Yeah. Yep, the snake as a lot of people call it, you peek out and all of a sudden there's four of them. And think about Astralis with the three players Overpass. inside B yeah. on overpass. Yeah, yep, yeah. looking up and hailing down Zipix. And the thing is, you get that first kill, or in the case of VP, you peek, and all of a sudden there's just a swarm of players. It's a one and done. You don't do it often. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it catches people off. Yeah. Nearly did there. Nearly did. Could have been interesting there. We go into the first gun round here, and 
look at this. We've pushed in towards the main entrance and middle. They're actually going to be boosting a player up. This is actually a really cool idea. Phelps has no idea what's going on. It's like a boost, but going around the other side, and they've got no idea, but somehow they get the kill. Henny's ready for it. Takes down Mur, and it will be the five on four. If I'm if I'm Mir, I'm asking Cassandra to shoot inside of middle or make noise. He dropped down twice, they both turned. Yeah. As soon as he dropped onto the spools, they knew he was there. It was perfect position. You're right, good trigger discipline as well. But he's got to get his teammate to support him in that sense, or at least go with him. Let him wrap around red crate so when he drops down, they can both double peek. Oh, definitely. Some good stuff coming in from the CT. They do get a kill and return. That's Chopper taking down Bolts. And we have a four and three at this point. No kits after that force by JR, though, with the AWP. Phelps, though, in a perfect position. Player with knife out. Going to get two potentially as well. Spots a second. Let's get towards A, boys. It can only be one there. Dropping out the whole back. And actually, he can't really do anything about that. And it will be Chopper left alone by himself. Here we go, then. Doesn't really have any grounds to go for this one. He will be holding up towards CD spawn. M4 and a flashbang in hand. His teammate did have an orb, but don't think that's recoverable. So he'll just be saving the uh, primary weapon now. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There's some innovative stuff we're seeing, but we're also seeing it not really translate. Now, the first one, obviously, that's a gimmick that's kind of fun. That one had massive potential. That boost inside the from here. If he'd waited or gotten some distraction to get down, it could have worked out, especially if he sits and just waits on that red crate and they rotate back around, if they can somehow hold them off on the A side. So much potential, but it seems like they're almost, it's perhaps an experience saying, oh, we've got this, we've got, yeah, see, look, there's where he dropped, they instantly turned, Phelps was ready. Oh, no, I'm not sure he's that ready. He was definitely looking, I think, trying to still like, get a sound cue, but you're right, he wasn't looking the right direction, he was he? He wasn't scoped in looking at it, like he had maybe heard a foot at the last minute, but that wasn't, it wasn't like he was certain about it, right? Like he had to just click in there and just about save the day. Still, could have gone either way, I think, but still, 4 0 has to be a full eco at this point. 5 0, almost a certainty as we go to round number 5. USPs and a PG 50 for Chopper. I do like saying that name. It's quite, quite a nice Chopper. one, quite a satisfying one. Yeah. Can you say it like Arnold? Every right. single time you have to say Chopper. No. No, don't do that? No. All right, Luke is going to try and spray through smoke. Won't get it. But not a lot of aggression. This time. No stack right back. That one sprays through. Lovely shot in return from here, who continues to be the dominant name that we're saying. He leads the way with three kills. Actually, I take that back. Chopper does. Either way, we're just getting rolling for them. Four nothing to convert to five quite quickly. Lucas on two HP has to be careful. Just stay alive. Interestingly, they'll give him the op and let him run back and hold on to that while the rifles go completed. Smartly so they switch it because. Admit who they are, and they get caught out. They nearly dropped the bomb there, too, which, well, they did, but nearly left it in a position that could have been awkward. Thankfully, Luke is still in position. Number six, we do have the potential for the orbs now, and the full buy for Vega Squadron. They bring out the orb on JR. Like we said, he was the player saving the second round. He's on zero for five right now. Hasn't really got rolling, but certainly a chance here now. We've seen some innovative stuff from Vega. I'd like to see him just do a nice full D4 round this time. Let's hold back and allow Immortals to actually work for the frags a little bit more instead of boosting up, pushing them, and uh, allowing them to get that first pick. We've got Henny, of course, the star orper for Immortals. Let's see if he can open things up. They'll be doing those crisscross smokes, you would say, towards middle. And the flashes and smokes go towards in. That's designed to give you mid-control, and we'll see whether they can open up the map. So our two CDs are there as well. They're going for another boost there. I did say, let's keep things default, but they want to be challenging. Lucas, Ooh. presumably going to shut them down. Spots one of them. They can't get the kill, and two come in for Vega Squadron. That's massive. He was actually in a perfect position inside of the smoke. Cassander catches him off as they go for the boost. He spotted the boost as well. He had the jump. He had everything going to his way despite being out positioned. And suddenly, it's all in the favor of Vega. Chopper's going to rotate around and catch off bolts as well. Good dynamic play from him to not stick in middle for too long after winning and securing those kills. No need to overextend. His steel will at least pull back on Mir. It's still four versus two. And interestingly enough, they were split the defense with you now Chopper inside a little bit. Two on B, which means there could have been execution potential. Smoke off on highway is going to isolate Kashander. But he's going to have to rotate back and stay passive and efficient. Let his teammates get in. Smoke out, as with the flash and a Molotov. So Steel can't capitalize in any missed shot. That might just do it for the round. There it is. Vega finally posted around here at number six. It looked like it was going to fall apart, though. They go for the boost towards middle. Lucas lines him up, spots him through the smoke as well. Goes to the full spread. He's expecting two kills to be coming in here. But his Chopper from his POV manages to swing out there, find the kill, and his teammate is lending a hand as well. Very, very well done from them. And it seemed like a desperate situation, but somehow they come out on top as well. And we'll just go back towards A, find a couple of kills here or there, but ultimately quite a simple procedure for Vega Squadron, keeping four players alive. There is still reset potential we have, though, investing in the grenades. Again, you can see they've got about maybe 2,500 average across the board, maybe a little bit less here and there, but they should be able to buy some. It's not a desperate situation it could be, but let's see what happens here as we go to round number seven. But Henny, I think he's boosted on the white truck for now. Yeah, he's a, he jumped himself up there. So yeah, he's, he, you're, someone, someone, you're on top of someone's head. Yeah, he's got to get exactly so you can yeah. see. 
all the way over to the box. We should see how my power did. Actually, very awkward exchange. Mir gets all the way up. He had his teammate to support as well. Hoochie was there if they pushed all the way through, but that exchange went down at the doorway, which means it could have been picked off and fallen back on the T side. Thankfully, it goes their way. Indeed. Well, he goes on to 19 HP, but Lucas, I mean, we're talking out the vents at this point, seeing if anyone will face towards mid. When you have the man advances, the CTs, you don't really need to overcommit at this point. Trying to get some into us, JR there manages to get away there, falls off one shot, but almost had his head blown off by Lucas at that point. But they have got the mid control now, Immortals. It is the gateway for this map, and he just spotting towards short, seeing the CTs want to rotate him. But at this point, like I was just saying, you don't really have to. Let them have mid, that's fine. You've got the man advantage. Choppers as well, gonna relocate, sit back and try and hold off from heaven. I like to go inside the site instead. And they'll hear the vents bust out. They don't have position to work with that. Because they've got both doors, two on either side. And Chopper's gonna watch to the right. JR watches to the left. JR is successful, Chopper not, but he's able to be successful in such a way that it gives him a chance to reset before Bolts gets in position to capitalize. A smoke out now and Tree is going to give them a bit of room to work with. Need to get the bomb down quickly though. 19 seconds, that's not so much the factor. Lots of time to plant, but more of this. The fact that Cassander is already inside of the vents and they don't have a post plant established. It leaves Bolts alone. They know as well that the planter is on the site. Has to be, so he's got to be there. Good pick up on the first, finds the second as well. Two headshots, four HP. He's just got to hold it off, walks wide, but Pucci's able to prevail. He nearly missed enough shots to give the chance. Where's the kit? Grab the kit, grab the gun. Don't panic. It's not picking, it's like a bug, isn't it? Did he have the kit already? He's, I think he already, he must have already had one. There is like a little bug where the kit doesn't pick up sometimes. Just maybe see if, they, no, he, already, he, must, he have, must have, because that's still on the ground. Yeah, I know that is a, a little bug that happens very rarely, but it's all fine regardless. He would have had the full defuser out it anyway. So it's not a big deal. Um, but there it is, 5-2. And it will be Immortals now. We're getting a couple of rounds in a row. The bomb goes down there, so I think we do have enough of a buy here for Immortals. We've got the all power once again. Well, AK is there as well, but not so much in terms of utility. They're missing the Molotovs and some flashbangs as well. Three smokes actually making four. And we'll see whether that Henny, with this decent spawn towards middle, can actually find the first shot. It's more than likely he'll go towards the mid warehouse, but we're going to be boosted up very quickly here. We'll see what happens. And see what we'll certainly be going up and looking for the first pick. I was half wondering if maybe if we missed it. Good shot from both. If there's two kits identically duplicated on top of each other from falling, that would have been an interesting situation. Hmm. But Lucas is going to try and get a shot through that smoke back away. They've already established the first kill and a little bit of damage on a chopper. He's been quick on his rotations. Keep that in mind. But right now with his position and smoke gone inside of the checker room, he's got to be very careful on how he wants to move away from this. Instead, they'll go more aggressive. And as a result of him getting aggressive, they bring JR up to cover off the back entrance. It's gonna be him that takes down Bolts as well, just through the edge of the wall. That's then canceled out. Three versus three. Chopper's trying to find the next kill as Chopper gets inside the vents and backs away. They did eventually get the boost in after JR found the kill. Watch Hoochie. He's now locked Phelps in. Smart position to back away to the wall because then he's got him pinned in. Whether he goes vents or backs up, he spots him. Well then, two on two, still in a decent position towards CD Sport as well. Open plan. This is looking very, very good for Immortals. The retake is on. We have got an AWP per chopper. Beats his demise there. Not really much he can do about it. Great positioning from still. Leaves the Vega. This is a two on one situation. It's JR with the AWP smoked out. Pretty much round over for him at this point. Does what he can. Push through that smoke. Still finds a couple of frags there. Good work from him. Like good instinct to push towards CD Sport when he finds that kill yep. towards the highway. Yeah, great. Uh, great position on him in general to get to truck as well. Very good round. Well then, they're so commonly wearing hats, the twins, that I always forget how curly their hair is. It's true. Like it's strange. Like it's hard to recognize them with that. So like every single game you see them with that, right? Yep. Well then, it's going to be an eco. I think a pause comes in. I'm assuming tactical. I can see a little bit of conversation going on. It could be technical as well. I'm not 100 sure. Matthew, what's your guess? Everyone's kind of looking over to yeah. They look a bit PC, confused, don't they? So that could be technical. We'll find out. Someone will tell us. Don't worry, Henry. I do worry. That's our that's our trick in the end. Now it says someone dropped. Yeah, it is technical. I was, they were all gazing toward the right. There you go, where the admins are standing right now. So I'm sure it'll be sorted. That's our trick, though, Henry. We don't actually know that much. We just have a thousand little birds whispering in our ear. Oh, there you go. They even tell me what to say. What, inter word for word? Word for word. Well, that's why it's a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. That, exactly. I was thinking you were going to go the other way and give them credit, not me. <laughs>
Thank you. Well, there you go. Sticks to, and this is a technical timeout. A chance for us to catch our breath and kind of look at what's happened so far. Great start from Immortals after going 5-0 up. Then we did find a couple of rounds from Vegas Squadron. And they get two in a row, but ultimately the, the money wasn't in a fantastic place. It hasn't had time to swell as of yet. So they lose that round. Two versus one in the end. It's still stepping up. It will be an eco. And we are back into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Round number nine on cash. Immortals, certainly the heavy favorites here. Vegas Squadron beat CLG yesterday. That was actually, mm. that's, I guess that's a bit of an upset. I guess just because we don't know that much about Vegas Squadron, we don't expect CLG to get very deep in this tournament, but still the fact that Vega won that game, the are known team CLG, so I guess that still counts as an upset, right? I would have said that was CLG's best chance to get a win, and... The fact they beat Renegades today... I was well, just going to yeah. say, up until about, you know, match point for Renegades, I was thinking that was true. Yeah. Somehow they pulled that back. That was pretty miraculous. That I'll was give cool. them credit. That was a nice 15-5 to come back. Not bad. Well, Phelps has already made his way inside. <laughs> Only after technical timeout that was always going to be the case has money gone. Tried to get four inside of the A site, worked a bit of a stack, but having mid presence as they did, it was quite quick to find one kill, but only one bolts. Now needs to be aware of the fact that they're rotating back out of A main. He is fully aware as well as he swings out on highway, catches off Mir, and it's Hoochie going back over toward the truck position, but segregated from his teammate, JR, who's pushing up toward the B tunnels. Lovely shot to start it off. This actually looks all right. If he can get into a position, get that rifle. The problem is that, yeah, Lucas is already on highway, so he's not going to have the range game with the CZ. If he had gotten to that AK, it might have been different. Yeah, you had the aim punch there working against him. You have no armor. Not really much you can do as soon as you hit a receiver bullet to the chest. Yeah, aim goes to the sky, and that's it. Lucas finds a final kill there. And it will be 7 2. The money should need a decent position now for the Vegas Squadron. We'll see what they can do going into round number 10. It's immortal, so they're starting to run away with this one. If you're not 100% aware as to how cash operates as a map, it's quite balanced in terms of it's not like a very CT sided or T sided affair. Good score, like 8 7 3 of a side. Like, you're not really too worried if it gets to that point. If you are starting to run away from the T side, though, I would say you normally want to start CT on this map because you can kind of set yourself a score. You're aiming to win it overall, but right now it's not looking too good for Vegas Court, and they have gone for a buy here. I'm going to have a look at what's the money left over. So, okay, it's a partial buy around the 3k mark, so that's fine. They're getting themselves to the first loss bonus next round. So, a couple of UMPs here Deagle, CZ, and we'll see whether they can actually deliver the goods here. Maybe a flashbang into towards A main as JR sneaks in. He's in not the USP, though. Not really too much he can do here, but he might find himself in a position where they just run past him, and he's going to be joining the rush himself. Can he make anything happen there? Oh, JR, lovely oh. aim. Hoochie's going to help him out with the UMP. Doubly so, takes down Steel. Backs away down the tunnel. Inside Squeaky. Gives up position on Bomb in doing so, but stays alive, more importantly, to allow Chopper to get over to the mix. That's interesting as he tries to fire through and find potentially a sound cue. I'm not sure exactly where he was trying to spot on that, but they've got the Bomb back. That's the more important aspect as Chopper. He's going to wait this out because he's lost information. His teammate being out of the mix, or at least out of vision so long, means that intern doesn't have the information either. So Chopper's not sure if they push back that middle. Hence a quick peek to check. He's still only spotted one. And Immortals have patience in this. 52 seconds. They've now got the advantage inside of the site. And he is well looking to highway. Now that scope will be heard. Striking oh, now. That's... <gasps> that's the sickest possibility. I was going to say Hoochie could bust through the door because Phelps had left the site, but that's even better. Listens to the sound cue to perfection. Three kills in the round, two massive ones, and that one no larger. As Phelps is going to sit and wait, does have the lineup. Chopper relays the information, though, and Hoochie gets aggressive. Could have sat back, potentially, but it's Phelps that wins the duel. That wall bang with the UMP, have you ever seen anything like it? You were pointing it out. You can hear the scope like clicking in as he scopes around the map. But to him to go for the wall bang here with a UMP, this is absolutely nuts. He's got 100 HP as well with head armor, and he takes him down. Yes, the UMP has got like high armor penetration, but certainly not for a door. That's insane. I've not seen anything like that in quite a while. Pretty cool stuff. And unfortunately, he doesn't win the round. Felt to recover, but that was really, really cool regardless. Well then, good awareness from Vegas Squadron, but not being able to deliver around here. It was a partial fight, to be fair. They got to have a full gun this time. They've damaged the economy, at least, of Immortals. So into round number 11. There's an open hand to JR once again. He's been very quiet so far. Let's see whether he can start posting numbers here. As we go into this one, it's going to be a three-man stack towards middle. This is the first time I think we've seen this in the CDs. He's sent two there. They've gone for those boosts every now and then, but actually showing some firm commitment to this area now. So Phelps and Lucas posted in mid. And on top of mid, if you want to call the boost that, respectively. Mir's going to wait it out behind the white box. He's got a flash to throw in their direction, but they're not pushing through just yet. Shannon's got the more important rule, lovely response. That pipe above his head saves him, and it's surprising that Lucas doesn't get the information relay quick enough because... Okay, Shannon, calm down. He actually goes down without being traded back. So Cassandra with two kills is able to fall away, and 
More importantly, on top of that, they're going to swing Veer up into the corner. Or rather, I say Veer, sorry. Old Tribe player I used to play against, Mir instead. And he's going to push through and catch off bolts. Well, Living my glory days. Rolling back the years, as you would say. Yes, yeah, I would say. You certainly are rolling them back and then some of that game. Anyway, four on two. And yes, Vegas squad adjusts. adjust. They go towards middle and then they can keep going. There's aggression as well. Immortals getting shut down left, right, and center. Just still remaining now in a four on one. Surely it'll be Vegas round. At this point, they don't want to give any kills away. You've got the bomb down. Let's start rotating that position. No one needs to go hunting for this frag. Even to let them survive is probably fine because you know you need the money a little bit more than the Immortals. So at this point, it's going to be one player isolated. That's Chopper towards the sunroom now. Still very good in these fragging situations. He's only got 15 seconds, though. They need to waste as much time as possible. He wants to give his kill away for free, it seems. Ten seconds remain. Yeah, it's not likely. It's already done. They, they don't need to beat this. They will. Give away guns, why not? Very oh, he's not going to be playing it. Oh, so don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Go for him now, but no one's in an angle to do so, because if they kill him now, That's no money. The fact he's got away with that one, he did survive, just so you know. Um, the fact he's, it's a four on one, and he's got two kills and so of the AWP, that's a bit of a nightmare for them. Like, they either need to do one or the other. Either really hunt him down or let him just rot with the AK and uh, go into the next round. But now they've got that AWP here. It wasn't the best situation in terms of the money, but they have got the AWP. Henny, the star player, as we said before, he can certainly open up the map for the Immortals here, and it's not a great situation for Vagancy. MP7 in the hands there. All for JR, sure, but uh, if they lose this round, they're going to be on the reset here. The wall bangs come in. We've seen a couple of these be successful recently. Did Hutchie actually get hit through that one? Where's he playing? Ooh, if... No, he was yeah, towards the other side of the map. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that would have been a need. That would have been interesting. Yeah. It's when we did. We saw that actually last week in Anaheim. Shander this time won't get away with being in mid. He walks through, he's blinded up partially, and Deagle to the face from Lucas will now allow them to take over the vet position. That means potentially a split onto B, but that's what the thought is. That's what the rotation is. Instead, it's going to oh, be onto no. A and Bolt. Takes down Mir. They can hold off this rotation even longer. Bomb's already going to be planted. Default, a lovely fake. Sold, delivered. Faster than UPS. They ship that onto the A site. It's all of a sudden going to be Lucas to take down JR. Chopper. Make a decision. You want that M4? Doesn't matter. MP7 from far. Luke is doing such a good job though with the Desert Eagle. He pushes through middle and he gets that first kill coming in. Here's a replay right now. There's only an MP7 he picks up there, but you can see the CDs have no idea what's going on at that point. He's made such a distraction. He gets in towards the vent. He's causing chaos absolutely everywhere. They can't rotate towards CD spawn. They can't get to the A site. And he finds the final kill there as well with the SMG. Good work. Picked up an orb to finish things off. A bit of a dream round there. And like I said, a lot of reset potential for Vega in that previous one. Didn't really get rolling there. Lucas decimates him with the Deagle there, and it's going to be round number 13, and I'm, I think this is a force by Matt, I'm not 100% sure, yeah, full investment here, gone down to zero dollars, so we're going in with CZs, and the UMP, very unlikely to win this round, have to go for the aggressive push here, I'm pretty sure Steelers are aware of this, should be able to get this kill all day long, goes down to 6 HP, but does pick it up. You gotta admire, admire a man like Kashander who just says, every single round I'm going to be a pest, yep, and start we... pushing, but at some point, you have to wonder if he's just... Too persistent and headstrong. When are they going to back off and try something different? To be okay. fair, pistols this time around, I'm not going to blame him for that. Yeah, well, but next round, we're going to see. He heard him spamming through the smoke at that point. You're just waiting for that reload queue. And then you hopefully you can get him and drop him there, but still in a good position. He was safe regardless. It's the frag. And he did have an AK before, but he swapped over to the orb because he's low HP. He just wants to sit back and hold an angle. But uh, here we go. And then five on two, Chopper and Hachi. And this was a force by Matt. So next round in terms of the loss bonus, they're only a first stage. So they, they're going to be 10-3 down and uh, another full eco coming in. So yeah, they're in a world of trouble right now. Yeah, This is like, this half's pretty much done after this. Just to point out something very minor. Go on. Where that bomb has been planted on the B site. Oh, yeah. It's a really cool plant, actually. It gives us something to talk about. It's very simple. I'm sure a lot of people know this. Where it's planted, right in front of that dummy, you can actually go a little bit closer to that target. And it actually confuses a lot of people because defaults are in the back of the site. When you walk in from the front, you don't see it. And it's very common that people run by it and then go, oh, wait, it's out front. And sometimes, as they try and hunt down these pistols, and they'll do so fairly successfully. They get one jump chopper to go up to the bank. That'll help Hoochie as well. Sometimes if, if there's, let's say, a tight situation where you've just clutched a one-on-one -on -one and you've got to get a clap past a fuse, if people overlook it, there you go. Detonated. So in, in matchmaking, it's, if you have a chance, yeah, if it's sure, completely matchmaking. safe. It's the thing like planting there when it's the CTs are going for retakes and stuff. You die in that situation. It's like, guys, we just lost the bomb. Well, that's and the now thing. You do, it. you do it when you know you're absolutely safe. Yeah. Look, I just said we had something to talk about. I was trying to fill space. It. Thank no, you. Good. Thank you. Well, then, like I said, 
If you want something to talk about, Matt, it's the economic situation for Vegas Squadron. It's in the absolute bin right now. It's 10-3 down. They're only going to get $2,400 into the next round, so that's enough to get the M4s out, but they can't really justify a single penny invested to this. It will be just one PD-50 and a lot of damage inflicted at the start of the round, which goes under 37. Chanda's taken some as well, but there it is. Lucas finds the first headshot, and it will always be Henny just bullying them and backing up his teammates as they start to engage towards short here. Phelps finds another, but Chanda takes him down. As said, he always seems to be a pest. As we go into the final kill here, 11-3, and a pretty simple procedure for Immortals there. They know the money's been fully reset, didn't have to work too hard for it. Final round, I would say Vegas Gordon desperately need this one. That's pretty accurate at this point. You've got not really much money to work with. It's 11-3 down. You're going to CT half of the cash. If you don't get more than three, that means if you lose the pistol in the second half, pretty much game over at that point. That could be a 3-0 right there, and uh, in, in fact, pretty much the game. So let's see what they can do. No kits, no orbs, no incendiaries, and five and fours. Five smokes, though. That's one thing they could rely on. How to spawn standard 2 1 2 split. Lucas at this spawn. Ooh, it's running straight through. That's impressive. Shander's actually waiting for it. Huh. So nearly gets caught off, but again, they get mid pressure so quickly. Phelps like is already that. up behind White Box. I like that a lot. Obviously, you know, they're not going to have the AWP, and uh, it's very uncommon for someone just to run through the smoke like that. You just see CT put that smoke down just to say, okay, well, that's stopped the rest of the Good nade still gets the first pick. Hurtie does find him there and murder some damage from the grave. Well, there it is, a four and four, but still a huge advantage for the Immortals at this point. CT's running out of utility very rapidly. The same story for Immortals, though. They can hold up. As the CT smoke them out of B story for now, but this boosted events could actually work out very nicely. Chopper Ooh, goes this and it gets two kills somehow. That's sick. That shot on Lucas to respond instead of just tunnel visioning on the first player he sees is pretty nuts. Yeah, well, that's pretty much saved the round there. Yeah. So something had to go very much in their favor, and Chopper finds it. Just about for six HP. Bit of a misread from Bolts because Chopper comes back out after JR hit him back sight. He didn't know exactly where it came from. Response from Henny tries to move him with a Molotov. Force him out of position and catch him off with a Tech-9. You get the round, Vega, the one you desperately needed. 11 to 4. And all things considered, a good result. That started off with first pick against them, but that nade. Lovely stuff. Couldn't really get it much closer this if you tried. That's actually, Tiger Woods hole in one. That shot. Great awareness and great spray control to actually bring it down to, like, foot level of the player actually shooting, take down the second and recover. It was a big round. 11-4. Still a lot of work here. An absolute mountain to climb here for the Russian side. But let's see what they can do as we get into the second half. Immortals are probably feeling very confident right now. Like I said, four, it's doable now. 12-3, not so much, I would say. There's actually quite a disparity between those score lines, believe it or not. Like I said, the pistol being a huge factor there. But let's see, we go into the second half. It will be Vega Squadron now on the T side. They have got five sets of armor. Of course, it means five Glocks. And that suggests it's going to be something very fast and quite aggressive here, maybe towards middle, but they are going to be smoked out of um, three CTs towards B. They have spotted that, though, the terrorists, so I'd be at this point calling towards A, maybe up towards Hyper Phelps. Oh. Lying in wait, taking down my Mur. I think he thought he was a little more clever than he was in that situation, because Mir gets over top of him and he waits a second. Pucci tries to get back up inside of the site, though, from middle. That gives Lucas a chance to hold this off. He's the only one directly inside of the site. Henny's the next closest, but he's back a truck. Doesn't hit the shots on Cross, which puts pressure on Lucas. Lucas running low on ammo as well. Is going to get taken down by JR. But watch Henny's position. Steel will shuffle over to Fort because Henny has to swing back and cover off Mir. He's swung in all the way from B, just staying alive. He's going to pull that girl away by time. Bomb well, not yet planted, though. Cassander importantly gets the kill that might allow it to be planted on the default position. That's going to happen right now as Bolts Ooh. and Henny trying to get ever so closer. Can't do so, because Shannon with his second kill on the round, and Bolt is still back in truck, long way away. He's gonna get triple ah, peaked. Why not? Could have got a little bit messy there, but they do manage to put it off. Like you said, that's probably the best way to operate when you know it's CT spraying his pistol down, giving three targets at that point. Almost lined up for him, but he can't land any headshots in that situation. A Vegas Squadron pick up a must needed pistol there. Fast play towards middle, like I said. When you get five sets of armor, you're not really going to be doing anything too tactical. So it gets to move control fast. They spotted three players towards the B site, the initial aggression from Immortals there. Go towards highway. You know there's going to be a couple of players there. Trade the frags, bomb down. Comes out to three on one in the end. So good work from Vegas Squadron. And like I said, we normally talk about this, but no real need when you have this sort of advantage. For Immortals to force up in the second round, like, you're looking to win the game, right? You don't want to chance things with money, and it will be Mo with some nice work in towards mid. He might be taken down at this point, though. Phelps finds him with the CZ, and Bolt's actually chiming in as well. This forward spike could actually pay dividends. Tag up through the door ever so slightly into Cassander as they fire a chance shot forward. Chopper's going to regroup with them, though, and he's got the bomb. He'll get in toward a main, and Cassander could potentially bust out, try and take advantage of that Mac 10 the AK is long way removed from this. Back behind the box at B, trying to anchor it alone. That might be a problem. 
I dare say, because he won't get there in time. Good news is he can try and hold it forward. I say he won't get there in time. Lucas finds two, and well, Bolt and swings back out. They get all headshots that time around. Absolute nightmare for Vega. Just as they get back in the game, winning the pistol, a glimmer of hope map, and it all falls apart. The force bite does work out for Immortals, and... There it is, 12-5. It has to be a force by return from Vega. Lucas doing some great work here with the Desert Eagle. Nicely done. Two kills with him. And just poor old JR in a horrible situation. So it's going to be Tech Nines, Deagles. In terms of the grenades, Chopper can buy a little bit more. Got 700 left over. I'm not sure that's the scoreboard actually slowing down. Yeah, he got 700. He could have got a smoke grenade or two, but they've actually opted for Easy Orb, of course, right? He wants to give a little bit more, but still, he got one smoke to work with, two flashbangs. Boost up towards middle, but Henny, he's got the scout. Perfect weapon to pop up the heads here. Just like that, I was about to say. Does some damage, and there we go. There's the headshot. I thought it would have hit the first one as well, but not quite. Might find a second. Does tag them. Oh, they line up too. Even if he shot the second player, it would have gone through him and taken it down. Residual damage. It's going to be inside of the vents. Busts them out. Deagle in hand. Backs away ever so slightly. Four versus four. Scout obviously goes down quite far from any positions that the T's have, but now it's single tap damage. If you want to talk about a pistol being most similar to a weapon, a Deagle is the mini scout rather than the small hand cannon it used to be. Let's take a tap toward the boxes, and it's going to be Phelps down to 11, but thankfully they make up for it. Hoochie, though, is still doing damage. They're not in a bad situation. Aside from the bomb position, but Hoochie's now picked up a second kill. He's got that bomb back. They're inevitably going to get a plant out of this. There is a Molotov, but it's in Steel's hands, not Lucas near truck to try and def deny that default. He would have been late anyway. Get high ground on both. See, above that smoke, Lucas, I think, just spotted Hoochie in behind the box. Takes down the first, responds, knew exactly where he was and where he would peek from, and they'll pick up round number 13. And Lucas with four kills in total. Very good work by him as Henny did a lot of damage there with that scout at the start of the round. They get squadron and four back. They get the bomb down. They find some kills as well. But in terms of the money themselves, they're going to be getting, what, like 2,500 overall. And uh, not really enough to actually get them back into this one. They have to take an eco and then buy up into the next round of 13-5 right now. Could force it, but they do pretty much GG unless they get the bomb down. Let's see what they decide to do. I think it'll be more of a partial buy. Here's the replay of Lucas now. Just finishing off the job. Said 13-5 and partial buy likely. Deagle almost in body armor, smoke or flashbang here or there. Not much more than that. Immortals now homing in on picking up the victory here. So interestingly enough, despite winning that pistol, they go down so quickly. Getting a bomb plant in the last round invest into pistols like you said they'll be able to buy it from the next either way yeah they don't go for any armor they don't get no a bomb utility down. well that's right. exactly it i was thinking armor utility you could potentially go for a faster plant toward a but they actually want to bust out on b slow my words down because i was trying to think of what exactly approach they were going to go with when it seems so default out of spawn but lovely play from lucas sprays down anti-eco spray down at that another four kills in a round for him Good work. He's up to 30 right now. He's 11 ahead of anyone else in the server. Yeah, he's had a lot of eco kills, to be fair, but it's not taking anything away from him. It's still a very good game. And yeah, the pressure being firmly applied towards the Vegas squadron right now, 14-5. Yes, they have enough the guns now, but they take a hell of performance to even think about winning this map right now. But let's see what they can do. So we're going to run over 20. Mir's going to leave out spawn right now. Go behind Hoochie and JR. This will indicate boost. One of them surely is going to get put up in that position. Don't make a liar out of me. They've made a liar out of me. For the first time. At least I attempted to tell the truth. Chopper, good exchange over at B. It looked like dead to rights with two players peeking, but one of them being on the AWP. No, I take that back. It wasn't even any. It was steel, so they could have double peeked that. They like to go more passive as Chopper does better damage onto Lucas. He's on 19. Bolts is boosted on A, and this is huge. They're in. They have no idea. One. How does he not see? He's He's got to be four by three. I've heard that call yeah, before, but there, he had to have been because he was dead, dead in our vision. Never mind X-ray being misleading. That was 100% seen going over top of red, and he only gets one kill for it. Gets costed. I'll confirm after and maybe tweet out that he's playing on four by three or not. But Jr's made up for it. He takes Lucas down. This is going to be their site to work with. Yeah, very difficult retake now for the cities. Might as well go for it. Even they didn't win the round. Every kill they get will be back going forward. Very close to breaking. The Vegas was the team, but it looks like it will be around going their favor. You're absolutely right there. Bolts certainly had him on screen. Wasn't flashed either. I'm going to almost bet the house that he's got four by three going on there. That's a bit of a nightmare for him. It was a good position as well. They were looking at him for what, like five or six seconds? Could have mowed like two more down. That was like almost the shroud situation, which coined it, although shot at a pistol. They were already inside the site. At that point, there's no chance they assume that it's dangerous.
If anyone's up there in that there corner, go. yeah. So look, right, look toward red. He looks away. It's expecting a flat. He's dead yeah. on the screen. 100% yeah. on our screen. We're at 16-9. So just to confirm, if you're not familiar with wide players, if you're a newer player, you've come into the wide panel technology. People play four by three because it's more native to what the game originally came from. 1.6 back in the CRT days. Like it was 600, a field 102, four, exactly. 640 sometimes as well. Which like it just feels more at home and more natural to the players there from the old school. Yeah, that's what they're used to. So. Mir tries to get a shot in toward Henny. He's on the AWP, but couldn't get the response. Goes down to 40. It's not the worst situation, but Phelps is going to be the one to push once more. Tag through the wall, 1 HP, but they can't find the follow-up, and he'll get away. A nade would have done it. Only one nade, though, and it's Mir that has it, so it wasn't nearby. And they'll rotate around, give the op to the low HP player. I know that seems crazy, because why? He's got such low HP. Why would you give a valuable gun? Because yeah. he only needs to hold an angle. He can hold a really tight angle and have the advantage in jewels there. It's unlikely he's going to take damage. He doesn't have to just spray bullets down. One shot kills, so it does make sense in this regard. Allow him just to hold a tight angle at that point. Steel, good positioning. Vent not blown out. Mir had no expectation that he was there. Boosted up from B. Chopper didn't see that oddly enough. Normally when you get a player out toward checkers, he spots things like that, but obviously he got there a little bit later and they already got inside. He can wait, he can counter this position, hold him off, try and get him to drop back out. I would say they could Molotov that off, but there's no one in position to do it. If they could get a Molotov in there, if they could flush him back, then he could catch him on retreat, but it may not matter. They've already got shots inside of the site. That's gonna rotate them back over toward A. They've come out from Squeaky to do that. And I was gonna say JR's the one that only went over in that direction, but that's all changed in Chopper. Needs to be aware of the one pushed wow. up and made lovely shot. Good awareness, takes down Steel. That's really good awareness, I have to say, still out position him there. And the fact he comes around almost pre buying that angle as well. Really, really good stuff from him. That's pretty much round over this point. Lucas, gonna be backed up by Phelps, who's got one HP. He has got the AWP, of course, but can't really do too much about it. He needs to find an opening kill very quickly, and his team can strike at that point, but he'll be taken down, and both of them at the same time. So Vegas Scrodgem managed to get a couple of kills in a row. Here's, oh, it is 16 by 9. Wow, that is interesting. interesting. Wow, okay, well, it, could, it could be 4-3 stretched. It could be stretched, yeah, Think it could about be stretched. That. There we go. It's already 4 free stretched. I'm trying to work it out. Like, you can see the, the models are a bit wider than usual. Can so we go, to, say it's can we go to our in-game on him with our observer right now, and I'll tell you where that door lines up, if okay. we can do that fast <laughs> okay, enough. Man. Let's go. <laughs> is it near the edge of our monitor? Oh, there it is. So it is stretched, because we have about a three foot in whatever units to our right on our screen. So it is 4-3 The models look a lot wider, so yeah, that would make sense. You do like wide people. JR, lovely shot through mid. Connects to Henny, but just his arm through the wall. Doesn't really matter if you can't kill him, because his teammates are already going down. Phelps going to push through and catch out Chopper. Lucas on one HP. We've seen that be a common HP factor in this game. Doesn't really matter if he had one or a hundred if Mir's going to close line him like that with an AK. And they're pulling this back ever so slightly. Immortals needs to be careful. 14-7. Still a long way to go, to be fair. And this time they did start out with just pistols. But we've seen stranger things happen today, Henry. Have we not? Four on three. We do manage to pick up an AK-47 for Steel, but it uh, doesn't look like they be doing too much damage after taking out Chopper Bolts, gets his head ripped off. Now Steel just trying to hold on to this AK. And it will be Phelps with the USP as well. And Vegas Squadron managing to chain some rounds in a row now with uh, three in a row, but uh, keep your four players alive still. And we'll just need one more round. So no more four spies, please. Let's just finish this off with the guns. Don't need to get yourself in any problematic situation. Still does manage to save his aim on the look of thing. Phelps trying to do what he can with his USP. In a good position, does some considerable damage to the shender, but ultimately he will go down. Still saves the AK there. That certainly helps things out going forward. Well done. So 14 8. We'll keep counting them up. AWP out for Henny this time around. So as you say, no more force buys. Make sure you get full utility. They do have to go to a FAMAS on bolts. That can be justified. Bigger issue, perhaps, is Henny on this single kit. So watch for a dynamic op as a result, because they're not going to have a, a, a kit on either side of the map. He's going to have to rotate, be close enough by to be relevant, and also have that op to hold angles. It won't be aggressive. Think of places like Truck, potentially here, inside of middle. That's his best plan to get to either side of the map. And a quick Molotov means no boost. Smoke off as well. This slows the play ever so slightly from Vega. Gives them more of a chance to get a read on them from the defensive side. Well, then six rounds out of tie things up, but I'm also just need one to get that map point. Open either side, of course, he'll be in the hands of Henny for now. And we have got the players just hunting out in more of a default right now. Bomb is towards Sunrun right now with Chopper and JR. Lucas is still towards B. No one aggressive at all. It's quite a passive hold from both sides. Actually, almost identical if you look at the setup on the map. That's quite cool to see that all breaking down. And uh, as you can see, like one, two, two, two. Yeah. And then round number 23. 
No one giving anything away just yet. We have got the majority of the utility up for Vega as well. Smoke grenades, molotovs, and flashbangs. No map control coming in just yet. The bomb towards Sunrim suggests a B split could be coming in momentarily. They have got the smokes to go for the vent play, boosting one player up as well. And his patience. It's admirable. But he won't be able to spot boosts and as a result get smoked off. So Phelps has to stay where he is on the bottom of highway. Just to be sure they don't get too much mid present. Spots him now going toward the vents. He's going to rotate off this. Doesn't want to sit around. They to play this smart, but they're losing a little bit of map territory in the process of doing so. And Mir's already Molotov off the back of the box at checkers, meaning he can get out of the vents. Steel's going to post right side with Lucas. This is interesting. Double peek from that position. He's going to go early. Lucas not made them in. Finds one already. Steel's going to try and capitalize. Does follow up on another. It's down to just the AWP, and it's map point for Immortals. A B split comes in, but Immortals hold strong, especially on that B site. Some difficult sprays coming in for the Brazilian side, but managing to put it off. Good crossfires and good rotations as well, holding them off just long enough to the Orp can come in and save the day there. Really 15 8, and here's Phelps pushing through that smoke as well. Just the aggro, it's all being focused towards that B bomb site. The money's still strong for Vegas Jordan going forward, but 15 8 can't make a single mistake now, and that's going to be seven rounds in a row to actually tie things up. Push over toward. Boost position, I won't say they're going to boost this time. They made a liar me last time. Seems like such a standard play, but to be fair, it has been Molotov off a lot. Watch the flash in, smokes in position. Gucci smartly beats them to it. So even if they walk through wide, he would have been ready for it. It's now a battle of tacticians. The nade goes in and tries to do further damage. They've lost the opening duel once more as Mir goes down. So Henny was towards middle, so I'm assuming that player must have been boosted or started to challenge towards mid entrance. Matthew's about to confirm for us right now. It was pushing through that smoke in the mid warehouse, so he wasn't boosted, but Phelps now continuing the aggression. We normally say when you get this pickup, you want to be falling back, allowing them to make the next move, but I like this a lot. Smoking out the AWP there, and he's actually going to be costing them a valuable time. They can't control that A position whatsoever, and Phelps wants a little bit more of this. Does he just push straight through? He has a little gap here. Spots one. That's really, really well played. Lovely stuff from him. You just don't seem to expect that coming from the CTs. That's designed just to hold you off, and he finds a gap and gets another advantage here. Three players surviving now. Four Vega squadron, and one round will do it for Immortals. I think that spells disaster. Don't Ooh. keep going, Charlie. Ah. That's close, but does realize you're dead right. Phelps did not need to get that far up. Come on. Fall back, stay s complacent, stay silent. Just wait it out. Just win the game at this point, right? Like, now you're giving them a window, at least. Like, you've done an amazing job getting those two kills at the start, but uh, now it's actually a little bit more possible. Uh, still allows one player to walk past the middle as well as Chopper. The call won't commit. Okay, he does hear them cross over, but the kill does come in. It's quite an equal situation. Three on two right now in favor of Immortals. And he gets in the corner as well, AWP. There He's going to go down to just Kishander, and he's inside the middle of the site. Completely countered off Immortals take it 16-8, as expected. That like made it a little bit interesting at the end. They kept control of the money. I think they do show signs of being a decent team. They've got the individual performance, but there's a little few things, you know, not killing a guy. 